Hi there, I'm Chef Eric Crowley, owner of the Culinary Classroom in West Los Angeles, and today we are going to make cinnamon creme brulee. The ingredients that we'll need for our cinnamon creme brulee are two cups, also known as one pint of heavy cream, three whole cinnamon sticks, five egg yolks, a third of a cup plus two tablespoons of granulated sugar, a little pinch of salt, and half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. The first thing that we need to do is we need to get our cream flavored with cinnamon. Our cream has already been scalded, which means that we've heated it up until we have bubbles coming around the rim of the pot. We're gonna wind up taking three cinnamon sticks, get them into the cream, cover up the pot, and let it sit for 15 minutes so that flavor gets of the cinnamon gets pulled out and gets into the cream. After our 15 minutes have elapsed, now what we need to do is we need to actually strain the cream in order to remove the cinnamon from it. A lot of the flavor from the cinnamon has been pulled out and is inside the cream. Wind up picking a small basket strainer, and I'm gonna go ahead and pour the cream on through and give it a little shake. These cinnamon sticks, you should actually be able to reuse one to two more times for additional steeping, things like mulled wine or a uh, macerated fruit mixture. Make sure you rinse off the cream really well and make sure that these cinnamon sticks are really nice and dry before you store them again. We're gonna take our sugar and combine it with our egg yolks with our little pinch of salt and half a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm gonna blend these together with a whip Get them really nicely combined. So we're gonna do a classic technique that we call tempering. And that involves taking our hot liquid and incorporating it into some eggs by gradually pouring it in while we're constantly whipping and moving around our egg yolks. Gonna take the hot cream and slowly pour it in. Notice I'm also pouring the cream and letting it drip over the wires of the whip. That's gonna help cool off the cream. And that's also gonna help uh, bring up the temperature of the eggs. And I'm gonna bring out a pan that I have prepared to make our custards. Usually a shallow dish like this will work really well for a creme brulee or a custard. This will help ensure that it winds up baking uh, fairly rapidly. I have the uh, molds inside a larger pan. You could use like a Pyrex baking dish at home or two or three if you have smaller dishes. You'll also notice I have a dish towel on the bottom here as well. This is gonna help uh, even out the baking of the custard. Um, another thing that we're also gonna wind up utilizing is some hot water. I'm gonna first get this custard into these molds and the easiest way to do that I find is with a pitcher. So after I get it all combined, I'm gonna pour the custard into a measuring pitcher and then go ahead and take the custard and pour it into my molds. I usually fill, will fill it up about halfway to start off with and then if I have any custard left over, Go ahead and continue filling. This is a very, very rich dessert, so you don't need a lot of custard. I'm gonna wind up taking some hot water right off of the boil, really nice and hot. Water from the tap is just not gonna be hot enough. The towel will actually help to keep the cups from sliding around. The towel is also gonna elevate the cups off of the bottom of the pan so water can actually circulate underneath the custard cups and help to speed up the baking. After I have these filled up about to where the water level comes halfway up the uh, height of the cups, these guys are gonna go into a 350 degree oven. I usually check them after about 20 minutes. And what we're looking for when we're checking them is we're looking for the custard cup when we give it a little shake to have a jello-like jiggle to it. So the custard has uh, come out of the oven. Uh, it's really important to let it cool completely. If you have the opportunity, uh, let it refrigerate overnight. Be really uh, wonderful. The idea between that, by that is that you're actually looking for a really cold custard and we're gonna have a hot, uh, uh, crispy sugar coating on top. We're gonna wind up taking some granulated sugar. If it's lumpy, go ahead and sift it. And we're going to sprinkle the sugar on the top. Get a nice even layer. The more sugar you put on top of the custard, the thicker of a sugary crust you're gonna get. So if you really like a lot of sugar, go right ahead and, and sprinkle a lot of sugar on. You wanna try and sprinkle it pretty evenly as well. And then we're gonna wind up utilizing a propane torch. I have one here that's got a plumber's nozzle on it, so I don't have to turn the torch upside down. And I'm gonna take the flame and slowly lower it onto the sugar. And you can see how the sugar starts to melt. 
One of the things that's really important is that you move it around. You don't want to let it set in one spot. I like to focus on the sugar that hasn't been melted yet. It's going to send up some smoke, so you want to open up your uh, window, turn on your uh, exhaust fan, and definitely try not to breathe in the smoke. It'll make you hack. And you can see how the sugar starts to go from a clear sphere to a golden and then a deep amber sphere. It's starting to caramelize. And we're actually going to be blackening it. The word brulee means to blacken in French. You want to burn the sugar. It's about the only time I'm going to tell you to burn something. Notice I'm going to move the torch around, focus on the unmelted white portions of the sugar. And if I think that it's burning too rapidly, I can pull the torch up and keep moving it around. And there we're getting a really nice burnt sugar crust on the top. And there we are. That is how to torch, how to burn sugar on top of a creme brulee. Okay. Our goal here is to have, once this cools off, it's gonna form a really, really hard shell. It's gonna have a slight bitterness to it in addition to the sweetness. And that's kind of the juxtaposition we're looking for. We're looking for a really sweet, creamy custard underneath and a really hard, crackled, slightly bitter, sweet sugar crust on top. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click on other links so you can get other recipes. If you don't see something that interests you, email a request to requests at mahalo.com. Also be sure to subscribe so you can get lots of wonderful additional information. Thanks and I'll see you soon.